Welcome back to Deal Unboxing and today we are going to review TP-Link's Archer AX 1500 Wi-Fi 6 router. So in this in-depth review we are going to go over the features, Wi-Fi speed, coverage and performance test to see how well TP-Link Archer performs in sub $100 market of Wi-Fi 6 routers. So please sit back, relax and enjoy the review and also please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon for notifications for future videos. So let's do a quick unboxing. In the box we have TP-Link Wi-Fi 6 router, power adapter, network cable and a quick start guide. Now let's look at the specs. The router is powered by 1.5 GHz tri-core processor, 256 MB SD RAM, 16 MB flash, Wi-Fi 6 802.11ax standard, router supports dual band, 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz with speed up to 300 megabits per second and 1200 megabits per second with 80 Hz channel support. Router also supports OFDMA, MU-MIMO and BSS coloring. It also supports iOS and Android apps and cost only $70 at the time of this review. Now let's look at the ports and design. There are four 1 gig LAN ports on the back of the router and there's a 1 gig WAN port for the internet. There's a reset button, power cable input and on the front of the router there are LED status lights and there are plenty of ventilations on the top and bottom. The router has four external antennas and you cannot remove them. Overall build quality is good for standard plastic construction. Now let's do Wi-Fi performance coverage and speed test. So we place a TP-Link Archer Wi-Fi 6 rod in the basement storage room. It has concrete walls around it and it is in the lowest part of the house. For this test we are using Intel AX200 Wi-Fi 6 card. It's a 2x2 Wi-Fi 6 card installed in our laptop and capable of speed up to 2.4 gigabits per second. It's the fastest Wi-Fi 6 card available in the market. We are also using iPhone 11 which also supports Wi-Fi 6 standard. So the total square footage of the house is 5000 square feet. I will be testing Wi-Fi connection in different corners and floors of the house to see how well TP-Link Wi-Fi 6 router performs in terms of Wi-Fi speed and coverage. In this test we will use Fast.com which is powered by Netflix to perform internet speed test and also using iPerf3 performance test. So if you are not familiar with iPerf3, it is a tool to measure maximum bandwidth on the wireless or wired networks. Also we will be using only 5 GHz channel for best performance results. And we have our MacBook Pro connected to the router by Ethernet and configure as iperf3 server. So let's get started. I have 1 gig Verizon Fios connection and for the first test I have connected a MacBook Pro to the router by Ethernet cable and using fast.com speed test we are getting close to 1 gig internet speed confirming router can handle 1 gig internet speed which is surprising and good start for this test. Now for the first Wi-Fi speed test I have placed the laptop with Wi-Fi 6 card installed right next to the router and as you can see we are connected to 5 GHz Wi-Fi 6 band with speed up to 1.2 gigabits per second because router only supports 80 MHz channel and using fast.com speed test I am getting 560 megabits per second download and 460 megabits per second upload wireless speed and using iperf 3 5 stream test we are getting 719 megabits per second bandwidth speed. Now let's run iperf 3 test on iPhone 11 but we are going to use 5 streams instead of single stream. With iperf 3 5 streams we are able to get max bandwidth speed up to 771 megabits per second. Now using fast.com speed test on iPhone 11 we are able to achieve 540 megabits per second download and 300 megabits per second upload wireless speed. Now for the second test I am standing 30 feet away from the Wi-Fi 6 router in the basement with a couple of walls between the router, iPhone and laptop. I have so far good Wi-Fi connection. First using iPhone 11 with the iPerf 3 5 stream speed test we were able to achieve 444 megabits per second wireless bandwidth speed. Now let's run fast.com internet speed test on iPhone 11 and we were able to get 250 megabits per second download and 240 megabits per second upload wireless speed. Now let's move to the laptop with Wi-Fi 6 card and here we are connected at very good wireless speeds and when running fast.com speed test we are getting 360 megabits per second download and 300 megabits per second upload wireless speed and running iperf3 5 stream test on laptop we were able to achieve 457 megabits per second bandwidth speed. Now let's move from the basement to the main floor of the house and do a next Wi-Fi speed and connection test. Here I still have good Wi-Fi signals and solid connection and using iperf3 5 stream wireless speed test we were getting 340 megabits per second wireless speed on iPhone 11 and using fast.com speed test we were getting 220 megabits per second download and 130 megabits per second upload wireless speed. Now switching to laptop using fast.com speed test we were getting 270 megabits per second download and 230 megabits per second upload wireless speed and using iperf3 speed test we were getting an average of 314 megabits per second bandwidth speed. Now I moved to the far left side of the house and close to 60 feet from the Wi-Fi 6 router with the floor and few walls in between the router, iPhone 11 and laptop. 
Here 5 GHz channel is struggling to have good Wi-Fi connection on both laptop and iPhone. So Wi-Fi connection is switching between 5 GHz and 2.4 GHz channels. First using fast.com speed test on laptop, we were able to achieve 77 megabits per second download and 8.7 megabits per second upload wireless speed. And running iPerf 3 5 stream test, we were able to achieve 26 megabits per second bandwidth speed. Now at the same location, we are going to switch to iPhone 11 and using iPerf 3 5 stream speed test, we are still getting 95 megabits per second wireless bandwidth speed. Now let's move to the far right side of the house and close to 30 feet from the Wi-Fi 6 router with the floor and few walls in between the router, iPhone and laptop. Here we still have good Wi-Fi signals for both iPhone and laptop. And using iPerf 3 5 stream test, using iPhone 11, we are getting 237 megabits per second wireless speed. And using fast.com speed test, we were able to achieve 200 megabits per second download and 76 megabits per second upload wireless speed. Now at the same location switching to laptop, we are using fast.com speed test and we are getting 290 megabits per second download and 170 megabits per second upload wireless speed. And using iPerf 3 5 stream test, we are getting 196 megabits per second bandwidth speed. Now let's move to the second floor of the house. Here we have two floors and few walls between the Wi-Fi 6 router, iPhone and laptop. Here we still have very good Wi-Fi signal strength with solid connection on iPhone 11 and laptop. And using iPerf 3 5 stream test on iPhone 11, we are getting 542 megabits per second wireless speed. And using fast.com speed test, we were able to achieve 340 megabits per second download and 260 megabits per second upload wireless speed. Now switching to laptop, we have good strong signals. And running fast.com speed test, we are getting 310 megabits per second download and 360 megabits per second upload wireless speed. And using iProf 3 speed test, we are getting 480 megabits per second bandwidth wireless speed. Now we are going to do a final router network ethernet speed test. In this test, we have both our iProf 3 server and client laptops connected to the router via ethernet. And using iProf 3 5 stream test, we are getting close to 1 gig bandwidth as expected. Now let's talk about the router setup and its configuration options. TP-Link router setup was very easy. All you have to do is download the router app to Android or iOS device. Connect your router to your modem, or if you have Fios with the Ethernet connection, you can connect your router's WAN port directly to your Ethernet cable. And you don't need modem for that. Then just follow the instructions in the app to complete the setup. On the router's main screen on the top, you will be greeted with the information about your internet connection, Wi-Fi router, and number of connected devices. So if you select internet or router or connected devices icon, you will see the detailed information about each category in the bottom when you scroll down. Or you can go to different settings from the available menu on the top. So if you go to wireless setting, you can create a single SSID for both 2.4 GHz or 5 GHz channel or keep them separate. Unfortunately, router does not offer WPA3 security. You can also enable guest network for both 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz bands. Advanced settings allow you to configure more options to choose from. You can configure LAN settings, set up VLANs, DHCP server, dynamic DNS, NAT forwarding, parental controls, QoS, VPN server, IPv6, and there are other system settings as well. Overall, router gives you a lot of control over advanced settings, and that is a big plus point in my opinion. But you don't have to set up all these settings if you're not a power user. You can leave everything to default. Let's do a final summary. Overall, TP-Link's Wi-Fi 6 router did perform very well in this review. Router offers good hardware with industry standard 1.5 GHz tri-core CPU for AX1500 category. Router has good Wi-Fi 6 coverage and would be able to cover 2500 to 3000 square feet house without any problem, even though I was testing in 5000 square feet house. Router can also handle 1 gig internet speed. Router also offers good advanced settings to choose from. So if you're a power user, you can appreciate all the available options. And priced at $70 at the time of this review, this router is hard to beat in the ever-growing list of expensive Wi-Fi 6 routers in the market. Let me know what you guys think of TP-Link Archer AX1500 Wi-Fi 6 router in the comments below. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon for notifications for future videos. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.